Hello and welcome to Relatable Code. In this video, we're going to talk about coroutine scopes in Kotlin. So let's get started. A coroutine scope defines the scope or the life cycle uh, within which a coroutine runs. It binds the execution of coroutines to a life cycle, which ensures that these coroutines uh, do not live longer than the scope which they are launched in. We're going to start with a scope called Global Scope. Uh, it's a singleton coroutine scope which is not tied to any life cycle. Okay, the coroutines which are launched inside a uh, global scope run until they complete their execution or until the entire application is terminated. And while it's available for use, uh, it's recommended to use it with caution. Okay, because global scope is suitable for operations uh, that need to outlive the launching activity or the fragment, such as long running background tasks. Uh, that should continue across different configuration changes uh, or even while the user navigates away from the launching context. Okay, so it's not easy to deal with these kind of coroutines because they can easily cause memory leaks in Android. Suppose you have an application uh, that needs to listen for changes in external device connectivity, regardless of the app's current UI state. Uh, for example, an application might need to monitor uh, network connectivity changes uh, to synchronize data in the background, maybe, as soon as the device connects to a network, even if the user is not actively interacting with the app. Uh, in such a case, you could use Global Scope to launch a coroutine uh, that sets up a listener for these uh, system-wide events, as they are called. Okay, since uh, this operation is not directly tied to uh, any specific activity, fragment, or view model's lifecycle, uh, Global Scope provides a way to keep the listener active uh, throughout the entire lifetime of the application. As you can see right there, if you hover over uh, Global Scope, you can read that uh, this is a delicate API and its use requires care. Uh, so even Android uh, gives a warning about this Global Scope that you need to be careful when using it. Okay. Uh, let's run this application. I made a very basic setup about this uh, connectivity manager. Uh, in a real-world application, of course, you will need to handle uh, lots of different cases with network connectivity. But since uh, this is a simple tutorial, I don't want to uh, dive deep into network connectivity. Okay, so if you open your logs right there, you will see that network is available. Okay, because this uh, connectivity manager has a callback which lets you know. Uh, one network is available and one network is lost. Okay, so if I open my emulator uh, again and I toggle, for example, uh, airplane mode, as you can see here, now network is lost. Okay, this was the connectivity manager that uh, I used and I created it inside my uh, main activity. Uh, and this callback, the network callback, is registered with a global scope. Okay, so it survives even if this uh, activity is terminated. Okay. Next, we have coroutine scope. Uh, it's a flexible way to create a scope for launching coroutines. Okay, developers can define their own scopes, uh, which allows for structured concurrency by tying coroutine execution uh, to application components or any other logical structure. Okay, and creating custom coroutine scopes is ideal for executing multiple related tasks that should be managed together. Uh, such as all of the network requests which are needed by an activity, for example. Uh, custom scopes help ensure that all coroutines within the scope uh, are cancelled when the scope is no longer needed, which prevent any memory leaks from happening. Custom scopes are often defined by using the coroutine scope function and passing a specific coroutine context. Okay, this context uh, often includes a job object, which represents the life cycle uh, of the coroutines within the scope. When the job is cancelled, uh, all of the coroutines within the scope are also cancelled. Let's consider a simple countdown timer uh, that can be started, updated, and cancelled, which is a common requirement in many applications, uh, such as cooking applications, workout timers, uh, or even general purpose timers. Okay, this example will illustrate how to use a, a custom coroutine scope to manage a countdown timer. Uh, that updates the UI with the remaining time and can be cancelled at any moment. So in this example, as you can see, we have 
uh, a job defined, it's initialized to uh, null in this case, and we have a timer scope. Okay, this is a uh, coroutine scope, which is defined like that, and it will receive a dispatcher. Okay, we will work on the dispatcher.main because this is a timer uh, and it has a task that needs to update uh, the UI. Okay, you will see how shortly uh, we have a start timer function and a cancel timer function. In the start timer function, we're trying to cancel the scope uh, if it is already running, which is a common practice when dealing with uh, jobs, not scopes in uh, coroutines. Sorry about that. Uh, and then we're defining this uh, job to be equal to timer scope dot launch, which will wait for uh, one second uh, before updating this uh, remaining time variable. Okay, it's a simple uh, integer, uh, which will receive a duration from our activity. Okay, inside our activity, we initialize our countdown timer uh, like that, and we call our function start timer uh, with 60 seconds. Okay, start timer will receive these uh, 60 seconds and uh, an on update lambda. Okay, in this lambda, you have access to the uh, new time after each second has uh, elapsed. After that, we are going to update uh, a text inside our uh, text view like that. And we have a function uh, to cancel the timer. Okay, so if you run your application, Let's check it out. As you can see, you have seconds left, uh, starting from 60 and going down to zero. Okay, uh, just as a normal countdown timer. And here you have a button for stop timer, which will cancel uh, the job which is taking place. Uh, as you can see inside countdown timer, it calls timer job dot cancel. Okay, which will uh, cancel this whole coroutine. And that's why coroutine scopes are very useful and. Uh, plenty of scenarios. Okay, you can launch the scope uh, whenever you want. You can do it like that, and you can cancel it also uh, whenever you want. Okay, don't really focus on uh, the logic of this timer. I just wanted a, a valid example to explain uh, coroutine scopes and their use cases. Okay, and next we're going to talk about life cycle scope and view model scope. Okay, in case you don't know what a view model is. Uh, it's basically a component in Android development uh, that acts as a container for your app's UI data. Okay, you can think of it as a bridge between uh, your app's data and the user interface. Its main purpose is uh, to manage and store the data needed for the UI, which ensures that uh, this data survives configuration changes such as screen rotations without losing its state. Okay. We will dive very deep into view models in future videos, uh, especially when we talk about architecture components in Android. Uh, but for now, let's stick to coroutine scopes. Uh, and here we have a lifecycle scope, which is tied to the lifecycle of uh, an activity or a fragment, and it automatically cancels its coroutines when the lifecycle is destroyed by default, which prevents memory leaks from happening. Uh, and with respect to uh, view model scope, it's tied to the life cycle of a view model. Okay, that UI component, the view model has a life cycle and it automatically cancels its coroutines when the view model is cleared. Okay, which typically happens when the activity or the fragment which it's associated with uh, is finished or destroyed. We're going to begin with life cycle scope uh, and it's used for coroutines that need to be executed in an activity or a fragment. Uh, and not outlive the life cycle of that UI component. Okay, and this will happen with uh, animations or UI updates uh, from network requests. Okay, so let's explore how to use this uh, life cycle scope. Let's navigate first uh, to our activity underscore main.xml to show you uh, the setup for this uh, scope at least. Uh, we will have uh, a text view, uh, a button, and a uh, navigation button. Okay, I'll show you how uh, we did that setup uh, so that we can explain life cycle scope. Okay, so inside our uh, Kotlin main activity, let's ignore this uh, for now. We have a button called uh, VTN get user data. Okay, it's uh, this button basically. 
Uh, after clicking on uh, that button, we want to simulate a life cycle scope, which delays for two seconds uh, before performing a log operation. Okay, and as you can see, to launch a life cycle scope, you write life cycle scope directly uh, dot launch. Okay, you can reference life cycle scope because you're inside the scope of uh, an activity. Okay, you can do that inside an activity and a fragment as well. Uh, so here we wrote lifecycle scope uh, dot launch. Okay, and here you can see I added a line of code which is uh, repeat on lifecycle. Okay, because by default when you write lifecycle scope uh, dot launch, uh, this code routine only gets uh, suspended uh, when the calling activity or fragment is destroyed. Okay, but for this uh, demonstration, we don't want to simulate the uh, destroying of this. Uh, activity, we want to simulate navigating to another activity, okay, which will prompt the uh, on stop of this activity before launching uh, the destination activity. Okay, that's our destination activity. I created an empty activity for uh, that purpose uh, to show you how lifecycle scope works. Okay, so I used lifecycle scope uh, dot launch and I uh, added this line of code to ensure that. Uh, this block of code only gets executed if uh, this activity is at least the uh, uh, unstarted state. Okay, uh, let me show you uh, what this does by running our uh, application. So there we have our app. Let's open our logs and I'm filtering for coroutine output. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and click on uh, this button. I should have given it a uh, text like get user data. Uh, let's just click on it for now. And as you can see, uh, a delay will happen for uh, two seconds before this log statement is printed out. Okay, and this behavior is normal because we didn't do anything. And this block of code was uh, able to be executed because we were still inside uh, the unstarted state, or at least in the unstarted state of this activity. Okay, let's simulate. Uh, for example, clicking on uh, that button and navigating to another activity. Okay, as you can see, uh, two seconds will pass and you will not see uh, that log statement. Okay, and that happened uh, because we had uh, this block of code inserted. Okay, if you leave lifecycle scope dot launch uh, by default, uh, this will get executed as long as the activity is not destroyed. Okay, but to simulate uh, a, a navigation to another activity, which will happen in uh, real world scenarios, uh, we had to use this block of code. Okay, and it's recommended to use in uh, real world applications because you don't want to execute uh, things like that uh, when the activity is uh, inside the on stop state. Okay, because when you navigate to another activity uh, like this one, for example, uh, you want that action to be suspended because you can't see your activity anymore when you navigate to another activity. Uh, so anything related to uh, the UI or any sort of animation, for example, uh, needs to be suspended. Okay, and that's how you use lifecycle scope within uh, activities. You can launch another scope if you want like this, and you can use another type of uh, repeat on lifecycle. You can write lifecycle.state. Uh, for example, resumed to make sure that this block of code will get executed if uh, you're in the resumed state. You can do that uh, for the created state and uh, these other states as well. Okay, but most often you will use the uh, started state. Okay, because it's normally used to update the UI uh, as a result of uh, network operations, which will happen a lot inside your applications. Okay, and with respect to uh, view model scopes, as we've said, they are used inside uh, view models. That's how you create a view model in Android. Uh, it's a normal class that only extends a uh, view model. Okay. Uh, they are used inside view models and they are most often used to fetch data from the network. Okay, that data which will be fetched from the network uh, will need to survive configuration changes. Okay, and that's why you will use a uh, view model scope. Uh, so here we're only having a uh, simple function 
which launches a view model scope, delaying for two seconds like we did with uh, our uh, main activity. And after that, inside the view model, we have uh, this log statement. Okay, uh, I commented out uh, this function inside the main activity and I used uh, this function for our uh, view model instead. Okay, so that you can see how it works. Uh, so let's launch our application again. That's our application. Let's open our logcat. And here, uh, let's click on this button again. A delay will happen for uh, two seconds before we see this log statement. Okay, and this got issued inside our view model. But if you click on this button and you navigate to another activity uh, like this, as you can see, uh, this log statement will uh, remain. Okay, because this operation was not cancelled. And that happened because our activity was not destroyed. Okay, when you navigate to uh, another activity, it only gets uh, stopped, but not destroyed in this case. Uh, and that's the main purpose of using view models. Okay, this will happen when uh, you need to call any uh, network operation to update uh, some data, which will reflect inside your uh, UI. Okay, so here inside our uh, main activity, we're launching a uh, life cycle scope. We are also using uh, this repeat on life cycle to ensure that any uh, UI updates which will happen will happen if our activity is at least inside the uh, started state. And inside this block of code, if you notice, uh, I'm collecting something called a state flow. Okay, a state flow in Kotlin is similar to uh, live data in many aspects, uh, but it's not life cycle aware like live data. Okay, so you can collect uh, state flow outside the scope of activities and fragments in Android. And in our case, we're collecting uh, this uh, state flow, which will update uh, after two seconds. Okay, so here you can uh, you can remove this log statement. You don't really need it uh, because inside this view model, now we're launching this view model scope, which will prompt a delay of two seconds before updating the state flow. Okay, and after this state flow is updated, uh, our activity will already be collecting it uh, if it is at least inside uh, this state. Okay, uh, so after you do that, uh, go ahead and uh, launch your application. And here you can click on that button. Two seconds will pass, and here you can see uh, your text view will get updated. Okay, this is the text view which will get updated. It is TV user data. Uh, let's relaunch our application so that I can show you something. Okay, let's say I clicked on this button and I navigated to uh, another activity. As you can see, we will not have any issue or any crash happening uh, because this block of code, which will update our uh, UI, is only getting executed inside uh, the onStart state. Okay, in this case, uh, this operation will already be uh, completed. Our flow will already be updated, but this update uh, is not yet reflected in our UI because it's not started yet. Uh, when we navigate it to another activity, we stop this activity. But if we navigate uh, back, as you can see, uh, we have retrieved user data. And that happened uh, thanks to this block of code. Because inside our view model, uh, this function was able to uh, execute and complete. Since our activity did not get destroyed, uh, our view model did not get cleared in this case. Okay, uh, so this flow was updated. Uh, and we can safely update our uh, UI with repeat on lifecycle, lifecycle.state.started. Okay, ensuring that this block of code related to uh, a UI component uh, is only getting executed uh, if we can see this activity inside the unstarted state. Okay, and that's about it. Uh, that's the main reason for using uh, lifecycle scope. And I highly encourage you to use uh, repeat on lifecycle with the started state in case you're dealing with uh, any kind of UI updates. Okay, because without this uh, started state, uh, this block of code will get executed uh, even if you can't see your activity which is not really right inside the context of Android development.
Okay. And that was a lot of information inside one video. <laughs> okay, I tried to have a lot of code pre-configured so that this video doesn't uh, get too long, which it could have if we had to write uh, this code from scratch. Okay, what I really wanted you to focus on, uh, what these scopes uh, do, how they act, and when they are used. Okay, so you need to be cautious with global scope, as we've discussed. Uh, and you can safely use uh, coroutine scopes in uh, this context, similar to how we did with our timer manager, uh, given that you can launch them and cancel them whenever you want. Okay, and with respect to activities and view models, uh, you now have an idea of how to launch uh, those coroutine scopes uh, while respecting the uh, life cycle of each. Okay, so you can use lifecyclescope.launch for uh, activities. And you can make sure that certain blocks of code like this one uh, and this one only get executed inside uh, certain states for your activities or fragments as well. Okay, so you can make sure that this code gets executed when uh, this activity is at least created uh, or started or resumed uh, or any other state which is available. Okay, we will most often use uh, started uh, to convey any. Uh, UI updates. Uh, you saw how lifecycle scope worked uh, when we navigated to uh, another activity, uh, which highlighted the importance of using uh, view models. Okay, for any operation that needs to uh, run in case the activity is uh, not destroyed. Okay, so here we used uh, state flows, which are very similar to uh, live data in a lot of aspects. Uh, we will, of course, cover them. Uh, in detail in future videos, but to avoid having a 10 hour video. Uh, in this case, we only want to focus on coroutine scopes. Okay, so we can launch uh, coroutines inside view models using view model scope dot launch. Okay, we simulated uh, delays for two seconds. We updated our state flows, uh, which were being collected inside our uh, UI inside the scope of uh, the slide cycle state dot started. Okay, which enabled us to uh, safely update our UI components while respecting the life cycle of uh, our activity. Okay, if you like my type of content and you find it to be relatable, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for future content and I'll see you in the next video.